everybody. Welcome to Mirror in the Stall. Today's guest is Jim Masterson from the Masterson Method. Welcome. Thanks. Um, I really was excited about having you on because my recent, and I say recent, and I think it's more the last like year, really, even in the last six months, understanding of how significant um, and the deep connection between the body and like the emotions and the entire experience of um, for me for the training, but then also the way that the horses performance go and how it's all so tied together. And, um, and I kind of, for me, when I was doing the groundwork, you know, for so long, started to really realize that the groundwork was probably more than just me bending them. And then once they figured out the right answer, they got a release. Uh -huh. It was a deeper thing that was happening. And so it inspired me to start reaching and learning more. And I stumbled upon um, Sandy and then really was like, oh, this is like a whole next level thing. So I'm super excited to have you on. And she was just up the road from you. So that was really convenient. Yeah, and very serendipitous because I don't even know why. Somehow we got connected on Facebook and then I never talked to her. But then one of my clients that had a very significant impact on the way I train horses and coach people now was actually her client. It was a shared client. So we kind of were like, the universe was like, here you go. You guys definitely yeah. need to meet. <laughs> yeah, the, the universe likes to group all the really brilliant minds together. <laughs> <laughs> so yes and so then I got to meet you when you were here doing one of the certification things um and I feel like it was interesting because I got to be on the other side of almost what I do and I don't know if, if all of your clients get that experience but from where I come from I'm always looking at the way that the horses are behaving or the you know their personalities or whatever are really connected right. to stuff that ties into what we need to be learning and that they they're here for us as much as we're here for them and um I brought my horse to you and she I think it was the demo horse and I was like I don't know if you want this one because she's got like three different things unidentified <laughs> going on and we can't really pinpoint it and listening to you talk and I have like the shortest clip because I wish I would have videoed more of it but sitting on the fence was like she's fine. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she said she's fine. And, um, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine too. I'm always fine too. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, as we got deeper, it was like, oh yeah, she's not fine. She has all kinds of things. So, um, that was my first experience meeting you, which was amazing because I was like, that's one of really significant moments in my life <laughs> of learning and understanding. And you were definitely a part of it. So, okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> Whatever so, I did, I'm glad it helped. <laughs> yeah, it was um, just watching you work and hearing the things you said was like, okay, so how it's so tied in. But I want to hear kind of from you, um, the Masterson method, you know, how do you describe it to people? When I uh, started doing this, I was grooming hunter jumpers, you know, on the show circuit down in Wellington and uh, mostly on the East Coast and Midwest. And um and when I kind of stumbled upon it, I, I uh, was in the performance horse world. So that's what it was about, making horses go better, you know, move better and, and uh, releasing tension and keeping them moving um, freely. But I realized pretty quick early on that, that it, it's very inter interactive with the horse, the way we do it. So that people were, wanna, they were going to want to learn it. So uh, because of that interactive part, it's really about, and, it, and it's as it turned out, it's as much about relationship with the horse as it is about improve, improving performance or movement, you know? So, um, so when I first started teaching it, my wife says, well, you need to, I didn't know how to describe it. And I'll tell you how I came across, you know, mm -hmm. seeing what was going on with the horse this way, but I didn't know how to describe it. So uh, my wife said, well, you have to have an, a 15 second elevator speech, you know, Somebody <laughs> says, what's this about you're in the elevator, you got 15 <laughs> seconds, right? So uh, what I came up with, it, it, it's, a, it's a method of equine body work in which you learn to read and follow the responses of the horse. There were kind of three elements, learning to read and follow the responses of the horse to help it release tension in uh, key junctions of the body that most affect performance. And so 
those three key junctions where you start that are the most impactful are the, the pole atlas junction uh, and the neck shoulder withers junction where the forelimbs and the trunk and the withers come together or the neck and the withers and the forelimbs and then the sacroiliac sacro-lumbar junction. So um, that was the 15 second elevator speech, uh, uh, equine body work that where you learn to read and follow the responses of the horses to release tension in three key junctions of the body that most affect performance. So I've got that like branded in my <laughs> brain. But so as I've talked, uh, taught it more over the years, uh, more and more people that aren't in performance have, have, uh, have you know, at that level of performance have come to learn it. And, and it's as much about relationship as about improving, about improving performance. And they go together. And you said something a little earlier, how they go to, you know, these things go together. It's not just about one thing or the other. And that, that's that part of learning how to follow the responses of the horse, which are changes in subtle changes in body language that correlate with what you're doing, um, get the horse to really trust you, you know, and uh, on their level of trust, which isn't very complicated, you know, it's just really important. Um, <clears throat> And once they get that, that the, once they get that you get what they're saying as you're working on them, then they really let you in. And so that's what makes it so effective. So it was interesting because I realized while I was training, I used to think of body work as being, you know, oh, it's this relaxing thing that, you know, people do for their horses. How nice. Mm -hmm. It's an extra on top thing that you can do to make your horse feel loved or relaxed or whatever. Yeah. But I didn't realize until recently, like the deep connection between every single performance issue comes from tension. And where does tension come from? It, you know, it comes from a horse feeling like the story around whatever's going on. Um, there's a sense of they're not safe. Mm -hmm. And so being able to be in their space and manipulate their body and have them trust you at that level and get those releases. I feel like it's so much more important than I ever thought it was before, you know, and the groundwork is just like same idea of the body work. It's those releases in that. Yeah. It all it, goes together. Yeah. So yeah. you're asking the horse to move in a certain way and, and, and in a, in a comfortable and efficient way, uh, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. And then when the horse does that and you and you give it a you know you release back off on the pressure or whatever you know once they get it then oh wow they get, they got a connection with you there because it mm -hmm. it felt good to them right whatever you just did so but yeah, but anyways um how i got started i was grooming hunter jumpers in uh, like i said there's a show barn here in iowa uh there it there was at the time and the a few families were involved and they had a trainer and they were on the road showing a lot, you know, and, and uh, so I went to work for her as a groom to haul the horses to the shows and be her show groom. Um, she had grooms here in town. So I didn't, I, you know, I didn't, I just wanted to go on the road with her and, and groom at the shows. And so I never was interested in massage or body work or anything, but I noticed that when uh, she or any other trainers had therapists work on their horses, whether they were a chiropractor or a massage therapist or acupressure or whatever, that the horses, um, they exhibited these certain little behavioral changes that correlated with what they were doing. So for example, the blink, you know, we watch the eye a lot to see the eye blink or the eyelid move, or maybe a change of breathing or the lips twitching. So, um, um, I was kind of intrigued by that. So that's what got me into this, you, you know, was the, what, what the horse was feeling or what was going on with the horse. So I started experimenting with, with it. And it, and um, the first time, well, the first thing that really got my attention was there were an old co horse chiropractor from New Zealand who lived out in California, but he'd been adjusting horses for 40 years. And he learned from some other old chiropractor in New Zealand mm -hmm. who'd been doing it for 40 years. And he is very long lever forceful techniques, but he was really good at reading the horse, you know, uh, and as a, for, for example, after he made a, a big adjustment, he would step back to see what the horse had to say. And you saw that we do that quite a bit because it's important to give the horse the space to, to tell you what's going on and feel comfortable with it. So um, he would step back to see what the horse had to say. And if he got a really good adjustment, the horse would drop its head maybe and shake maybe its head and then start yawning repeatedly, you know, or just keep yawning. <clears throat> so I wanted to do what he was doing. And so um, I actually wanted to apprentice with him but he wasn't taking apprentices you know these kind of old timers kind of just keep their stuff to themselves and so what he did when whenever he was when he came out to the east coast or to lexington the vet you know there was a vet that would bring him out that's how good he was that 
that I would drive him around to dark bar and to barn and hold the lead rope for him. And I would learn just by watching. And so, um, but there was another time when I was gro still grooming, we were at a horse show in Estes Park, Colorado, and our trainer hired these two ladies to massage our horses, do, you know, more traditional massage. And they started by uh, running their hand really lightly down the bladder meridian, which is that, you know, you know what that is. We have a bladder meridian technique now. Mm -hmm. And you, they just run their hand softly down this line, of, uh, you know, a Chinese medicine meridian, and just to relax the horse. And I noticed as they were doing that, the horse would blink, like, deaf, you know, a clear blink every once in a while. And I could see the horse was blinking because it was feeling something. So I started messing with it. And when I read, would run my hand down the bladder meridian, which kind of follows alongside the top line of the horse. And I got a blink. I would stop there and just wait and see what happened. I wouldn't push. I wouldn't massage. I wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and if I waited long enough, the horse would start to drop its head and then it might start to lick and chew. And in some cases it would shake its head and start yawning over and over and over again. So there was a connection there between uh there there was a connection something was happening you know so and i uh at first i wasn't sure if that spot that i got the blink at was me or maybe something else so i go back over it and i got a blink at the exact same spot so there's a correlation there between what i'm doing and the horse is doing so that was a big key see that correlation between what you're doing and the horse is doing because they always blink they always look and chew but if it's you know there's a connection between what you're doing then it means something so um, the horse is communicating with, to you and you don't, and it doesn't even know it, you know, it's just <laughs> feeling something. Now, the other thing that was cool is that if you put pressure on the horse, they'll stop blinking, they'll, they'll brace against it. So I learned that they just brace against, uh, that's how they survive. They, they uh, brace against uh, uh, pain or discomfort. They have to block it out or they, they don't survive. They have to just pretend, you know, we call it pretending. Um, there's nothing going on. So. I learned that when you back off, the horse softens and gives you more responses and then they release tension. So there's kind of a couple aspects of it. The learning how to follow what the horse is doing with its body language, subtle body language. And the other is learning that it's counterintuitive, learning to back off. If it's not working, you don't push hard, you, you push, you back off. And then, and then the horse releases even more. So uh, that's how I got started in this. And and um, I mean, I love doing it. And so I started just doing it more and more of it. And eventually I got clients and stopped grooming. And and um, and um, I was in that environment where, you know, if it works, they'll call you back. If it doesn't work, they're not going to call you back. So, um, so I got a really good education just doing that for, for nine or 10 years. And then but halfway through that, I, I, I realized people wanted to learn this. So I started... Um, setting up seminars and doing weekend weekend clinics and then um mas equine massage therapist i got i did an early dvd equine massage for performance horses and then um other equine massage therapists wanted to learn more about this so they would come to the seminars and then they wanted to know if i had a certification program and i go um, yeah <laughs> Of course I do. Of course, yeah. What do you thought? What do you think? No, I didn't. But I said, no, but let's, if you want to learn more, we'll go, go learn more. So it turned into, so now we have certified practitioners like Sandy and she's our, our, our um, we, uh, we have quite a few instructors all over the country in Europe and, and a, two in South Africa and a couple in Australia. And um, Sandy's the, and now I have advanced instructors that are teaching the certification program. So Sandy's the, like our main instructor um, person, liaison. She's the one who kind of mm -hmm. oversees training instructors. And um, but, anyways, that's how I I got started in this. So but that's the not the short version. That's the long version. No, it's perfect. Yeah. I love that it was just this um, tapping into this deeper knowing, even though someone wasn't like showing you. You know, you were just kind of following your intuition and going, okay, there's something. How about this? Um, I tried to support my clients in exploring the inspirations they get and not being so worried that yeah. hey no one told you to do it like that so don't so it's wrong it's more of you know how open are you to just seeing what working as in listening to your horse and they're going to tell you whether or not they feel safe with you asking them to do that or not so why don't you just roll with it and you know mm -hmm. try things out um especially being someone that like basically kind of just created this like system like from the yeah. beginning 
having to kind of really like step into that. I'm just going to trust that this is going to be. Yeah. You know, it's all an experiment. Everything you do with the horse, if you look at it that way, you're going to try something and see what the response or the result is. And then um, go from there, you know, whether you need to back off or do something different. And, um, but one thing I think that, that was a bet was an advantage I had is that I didn't have any training in every, anything, you know, if I'd have been trained in, Oh, there's something here. I better do some massaging on it or bend it or push on it or something. Then I wouldn't have discovered that. So being uh, uneducated was pretty big. Um, yeah. And then having the patience to, to just wait and see what what's going to happen, which is kind of being naturally lazy. So I was <laughs> lazy and uneducated, and, and perfect. And it and it worked. So, <laughs> but, but I think a lot of things we do with horses, we we as humans, you know, we have this kind of goal that we want to get to this goal, and and. It, uh, the pace we go at works fine for us, but it, it doesn't work for the horse. And the horse may go along with it because, because it's the easiest thing for them to do. You know, it's worse than being, you know, uh, smacked or pushed or pressured. So they go mm -hmm. along with it. But, but if anything we do with the horse, if we just step back and wait a few seconds after we do something with the horse and see what their response is, like, did they get it? Are they, are they, are they like holding it in? Are they relaxing, letting it out? So even with body work modalities, any, any modality you, you do, if you were to slow down, step back, give the horse a chance to tell you what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, it would be more effective, you know, mm -hmm. and then learning to follow what he's telling you as, as, you know, as whatever's going on is going on. So that's the, another cool thing about this is so easy to learn because you don't have to know a lot of anatomy. You just have to learn from, you know, whoever's teaching you how to back off, how to wait and what to look for you know, the level of pressure to use or non-pressure and, and what to look for. And then a few techniques, and then you're kind of on your way doing it. So that's a, a nice part of it. Yeah. I feel like what started to happen for me, and I think the big reason why, like you're saying the, the lack of like a formal education around it, I went through like a certification program for horse training, like back in 2004 out in Colorado. And, um, and then I followed those steps and it was very, it kept me in this little like frame and I never really, until I got far enough into it where I was comfortable enough. And then I started to kind of explore different options, but I always inherently, when I was bending them around, if they were stiff in one spot, I would just kind of put my hand on that spot and almost bring awareness to it. But I didn't know, I didn't know that was a thing. I was like, oh, I just, well, you, I did this thing. Yeah, your, and it worked. Your, your intuition kind of kicked in a little there right. and, and you followed it. huh? Yeah. And then with that pause, what shifted in my training and then it really cemented it in once I met Sandy and was watching, you know, what she was doing with this um, particular method was now when I take a horse, and I find it's like spots where it's triggered. So it's almost like your version of the blink of, for them, it's like when I'm asking them to do something and they get really into that sympathetic nervous system or in that survival stress state, mm -hmm. I can leave them in there in that for a few moments. And then I completely stop and drop my energy. And I wait as long as it takes for them to switch back over mm -hmm. into that, you know, the, the parasympathetic, that licking and chewing and the and it feels like from doing that, it's like you're showing them, hey, this was something that maybe you were worried about and needed to get tense about, but I'm going to give you enough time to actually process that it, there is a different story that you can yeah. relax into it. And it feels much more sustainable, mm -hmm. but it's not as not the repetitions almost. It's like you just give them that time mm -hmm. to soak and actually go, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a lot of standing around and that is really uncomfortable for people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing anything. Where, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. It's especially uncomfortable if somebody's watching, like, what am I paying you for? You're just standing there watching the horse. But, but uh, it's interesting because what you said, it's the same nervous system, whether you're doing body work or training and, and um, that, <clears throat> that was something you said about, Oh yeah. First you, you find that trigger but that in order to find that trigger and help them let it go, you gotta, they gotta become aware of it. So you, you got to, it, with the body work, it's the same. Sometimes we're doing body work on the horse and, and we have techniques that involve gentle manipulation. We have techniques that involve very light touch, but it, with both of them, you'll find something in physically in the horse and then the horse will get worried about it. Like, don't, no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. So you have to soften and wait. 
and then they'll release it. So like the, if you, um, if you stay in that parasympathetic zone all the time, you're never going to find the sympathetic stuff, right? So you've right. got to find it and then you got to back off and give them the chance to let it go. So it's interesting training or with physical tension, it's, and it's a similar process mm -hmm. for the horse and the human. And, mm -hmm. and then the, the, the human starts to settle down. If they, that process of waiting, just wait, see, mm -hmm. wait and see what happens. Like the bladder meridian, you search for a blink, you get one, you stop, you wait, do nothing. Um, the, the person starts to settle down a little. And, and so you end up doing it together, you know, <laughs> pretty soon nobody's doing anything. Well, we're, we're <laughs> and all kinds of stuff is happening. <laughs> yeah, and all kinds of stuff is happening. But um, it, it's kind of, it, it is a neat thing about it. It's not just doesn't end up being about the horse. It ends up being about the person, you know, too. Yeah, I feel like that's all of my training at this point is, you know, everything that they're doing and they're working with, it's, the bladder meridian is basically like a really amazing mindfulness activity to do to get everyone present. You know, um, you're giving them a task to focus on, but if you're not really paying attention to when they blink and, you know, it's, um, I'm probably going to start using that for my clients. Okay. We're going to do the bladder meridian. Well, you start realizing that you're not thinking about anything while you're doing the bladder meridian and, and it is mindfulness and, and a lot of, you know, therapeutic places are using, starting to use the bladder meridian more as a technique for their clients, you know, to just be mindful and, and present and present and um, it, it works. <laughs> so for me, I'll use an example. For me, my horse um, was kind of just lame all over and it was hard to identify where the lameness was coming from because it was a little bit of the front left, the high and right. You know, and then she was like very stoic. She's always, she's very sensitive, but also very stoic at the same time. So she's real tough in that way. Right. And so it was interesting that once you became, she became to come back into her body and really relax and shed some of that stuff away. She could actually feel where the pain was coming from and we can identify, but it also made her look more lame. Right. Like, yeah. um, yeah. And I think we as human beings do that, where we kind of disassociate from different parts of our body that are uncomfortable. Uh -huh. So um, talk a little bit about that, like when you start to uncover that stuff. Well, well, it, it's, um, you, you have to look at the whole body. You can't, the body, the whole body, because it's all interconnected. And with a, a horse, it's even sometimes more of a mystery because they can't tell you about it. And if they can, they won't, you know, because they're, <laughs> they're covering that up. So, I mean, it reaches a point where they're actually lame and then you know there's a problem because mm -hmm. it reaches that point. But um, it's um, the whole body's interconnected, you know, physically. And, and you know, I have, I have this thing I say, it's almost always never just one thing, you know, it's one thing that's connected with another and the horse compensates maybe for one thing. Let's say they have a cough and joint, mm -hmm. you know, uh, issue. So they're going to internally, well, they're going to compensate for the coffin joint. They're not going to show it. And so they're going to, um, they're starting, they're going to, let's say it's the right front. So they're going to start compensating. It'll show up in the left time. Tension will build in the left time. Tension mm -hmm. will build in the right pole and atlas. Tension will, um, as they're going away from the soreness, it'll build up in the opposite side of the lower neck. For example, I'm just using like a really common pattern. Right. And, um, and so it becomes, uh, it can become so, you know, sore, painful or just uncomfortable to the point where they have to start showing it. So, you know, the vet will come along and he'll identify it and they'll inject it, but there's still often the horse isn't quite sound, you know, he's good and then he's off and he's good and he's off. So that compensation pattern of the, the rest of the butt, you know, the lower C7 T1 here and the sacrum and gluteal on the left hind is still an issue. So now the, the secondary, the primary issue is not the main thing anymore. It's the other thing. So you got to look at the whole body and we work on the whole horse. You know, we, we, you got to do the whole horse because if he's stuck in one area and, and a lot of times this area down here in the, the thorax and the sternum is associated with the tension up in the groin area, there's a connection there in it. And, um, and so you'll find, identify the problem behind or, or do something about it, but you still have the, that other part of the horse to do. And the mm -hmm. cool, cool thing about this, and I keep saying it's a cool thing because it's cool. But is that <laughs> uh, you get the horse's nervous system to release the tension. When you're following the responses, you're letting, allowing their nervous system to release the tension. It releases deeper levels of tension, you know, like, 
uh, core and postural muscles, the you know, horse is compensating for something and it's, it's in their whole, their core muscles and their psoas and their, uh, the postural muscles of the spine and then the multifidi and all those, you know, Latin words that go into Italian recipes. And um, so you gotta, <laughs> when you do this kind of work, it, it does release the whole thing, you know, to a certain degree, you still, it's not like push a button, it's all gone. Sometimes right. you gotta work on the horse multiple times and as you peel off the layers, but you're working on a pretty deep level of the horse's nervous system. So I call those mystery lamenesses, you know, and high, the mystery hind end lameness is a, you know, it's a common thing. It, and there's some, the, the, the horse is off behind and they call the vet and they can't find it in the feet and legs. Um, they might inject the sacroiliac, which will help a little bit, but that's only one part of it. You know, the other part might be the psoas mu muscles and the deeper groin muscles, and then also up in front here and then the pole and atlas. So it's not as complicated as it sounds. It's just release everything, you know, if it's tight, loosen it, but you got to do the whole body. So um, I don't know where we got started on that, but that's. No, we that's perfect. No, that's perfect. It was the, just that, like, what I had said to Sandy before, I, um, I was worried that I didn't want to just have the vet out first it was almost my natural reaction was I wanted to have everything settle down a little bit more. So if there was something really specific, we could identify it. Cause at that point I knew they would be blocking her hoof, but then the hind end, you know, it was just like, if we can just get real clear and release the secondary, the tightness of the muscles and so we could actually see, yeah. you know, so that was a really beneficial um, yeah. session to have before I even had the vet, you know what I mean? For people yeah. that are, have stuff like that to know that like, there's, you know, the different layers that you can work at and actually yeah. having someone come out and do this before you actually have the vet come out. It was yeah. a very, like, very, it, then, it made the vet appointment much more efficient and effective. Right. Yeah. And it's, it might be that um, you uncover something that the horse would have covered up from, you know, hidden from the vet when you mm -hmm. do this. And it has, sometimes that happens. You'll work on the horse and all of a sudden there is something, but that's something they've been covering up. So right. it can be helpful in that way. But also, you know, it, when you get the horse to release on a deeper level, um, you're working on the whole body and the vet's going to be looking for one thing, you know, he's going to be looking for the first thing because that he, she, you know, they're, that's how they're trying to look at the parts, you know, and so they're going to try to identify what's the problem and then they'll treat that. And then uh, if there's the horse is still, there's a problem, they'll come out and look for the next problem. So, but um, this kind of covers more bases all at once when you do this type of body work anyways. And, yeah. Um, and, and same with chiropractic, this will often make chiropractic adjustments much more effective and last longer. And sometimes they won't need, you know, as many adjustments, but they work well together. And I, you know, I, it's, I, it, I would love it if more vets and chiropractors and farriers looked at it this way, you know, didn't look at it as either or, okay, well, you're going to do that. That's not, you know, it's not really going to work as well as doing this, but it all works well together, especially, yeah. Well, with farriers too, you know, the feet and the body go together. And, and um, if you have your horse body work done on your horse before you had his, have his feet done, um, the horse is going to be in, uh, in a more natural posture. And mm -hmm. so the, the farrier is trimming the foot balance to a natural posture instead of a compensating posture. Mm. In addition to the fact that it might make his job a lot easier <laughs> when he can pick up a leg and the horse isn't fighting him because it, right. horses do everything for a reason. They're not just saying, I'm not, I don't want you to hold my leg today. They're, they're saying this is uncomfortable. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's such an important thing. Um, having a team of people, because everyone has their own specific specialty yeah. uh -huh. that it's not separate. It's also interconnected. And why with my clients, it's like, I'm going to train your horse and we're going to work on, you know, the stuff that energetically you might be bringing and holding tension because the moment you get into their space and you're, you've got your stuff, we don't know if it's their stuff or your stuff and they're just trying to protect them from you. And you're thinking they're being whatever, you know, they're, yeah your perception of what they're being. And so trying to understand that there's all these little moving parts, but it really comes down to paying attention to what the horse is telling you in the moment, because they don't have the ability to pretend, <laughs> you know, right. like so many people have yeah. their um, ideas about that. But for you, knowing that when you come into the space to work on this horse and you're 
your and what who you are and what you're kind of a day you're having you know and you're entering the space and you're going to ask this horse to feel safe around you and i always um bring it back to people and i say have you ever been to a chiropractor or a massage therapist and then they ask you to lay on the table and they're going to manipulate their body well if they're like like and then the traffic over here and then they're grabbing your arm and your neck to adjust you like you're not going to get the adjustment that you could because you're going to be like oh my god so Mm -hmm. as far as when you work with horses or when you're you know teaching people to work with horses do you address that part of it for them like to become aware or does the work itself do that i think the work itself does that because i yeah i think the work itself does that and and um I think pick up, people pick up on that pretty, pretty easily. Um, I'm not as good at reading people as, hor- as horses. So I, you know, I mean, if somebody's obviously it's easy, you know, we have a lot of people that come on the course that are very high energy and some that are not high energy, but after you work with them, you know, doing some techniques, you realize that they're, they're very um, perfectionist. And so, mm-hmm they get frustrated quickly if it doesn't go right. So they may enter the stall and to me, they look like, Oh, you look like a normal person, you know? So, (laughs) and then, and, and they're, and they're nice and they're listening, they're paying attention. And then I realized that they're, they get frustrated when it doesn't go right the first time. And so they they want it to be perfect. And so then that's gets in the way. And I wouldn't have recognized that in a person until I saw them working on the horse. So, Mm -hmm. um, but it, but the work itself kind of settle starts to settle them down. And, and on a, like a five day advanced course, it's, it's fun to watch. Well, fun, it's fun to me, but don't tell anybody, but um, <laughs> they'll, the same a person will have the same problem with every horse they work on every day. And, mm-hmm. and you, and you see, well, that's not the horse. That's not a coincidence. They're getting the horse that's giving them the same problem every day. Mm-hmm. And then on Thursday, all of a sudden they get it and they get a good horse. Well, they just made the change in themselves. It right. wasn't all of a sudden they got a good horse. Yeah. Um, and you, yeah, can't I tell, love- you can't tell some people that you just got to let them work mm. it out during the week. And then they finally, finally. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's um, I had a, actually I do a group lesson on Tuesdays and I had um, one of my clients was working on her horse. It's new to her. She's leasing it and he had tons of energy and she was running forward and she was like, oh, it's just feels, you know, so I said, we're just going to work on, you know, when she feels like she's making the decisions to stop her backer and then sit mm-hmm. and relax everything. And the horse was still wanting to walk off. And she's like, I don't understand. And I said, did you check in with your own body? And she's pushing in her syrups, like, please, please don't walk off. Please don't like that agenda was so like, please don't move. We just are supposed to sit here. And I was like, what ha- would happen if you just didn't care if she walked off? And it was like this relaxation I was like and just relax your leg like relax who cares if she walks off who cares nobody cares there's no right or wrong nobody cares and that piece alone released the tension from her body and then the horse was just like oh okay and just yeah. stood there she's like you just have to care a little bit less yeah. like, letting that idea of perfection just go it's okay mm-hmm. like let's just let it all happen or right or wrong or you know it's working or it's not working and if it's not working it's there's a reason horses do everything for a reason like i said they don't just wake up and say i'll get together in the morning say let's all not pick up our left cannery today (laughs) you know they don't do that (laughs) right they're not picking up their left cannery or they're not bending or they're or they're um they're bracing against the bit there's a reason you know that they're doing that they they don't just do it because they want to be naughty so that was huge uh you know for me you know, when I got that, you know, the horse isn't trying to be bad. It's just mm-hmm. it, it, something scaring it or something's uncomfortable or they don't understand what you want. And that, then that gets scary for them. So, and, and I, yeah. it helped me to not get angry at horses. Cause you know, when I, you know, I used to work on like 10 horses a day. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you get a really frustrating mm-hmm. horse and you lose your temper. And so, um, slowly, gradually, I came to realize, you know, the horse isn't doing that on purpose. So, it made it easier for me to step back, take a deep breath and not blame the horse because they aren't mm-hmm. jerks, you know, that jerks, a, right. it jerks a human invention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for you um, and even that process of you learning all this stuff and going through the having to be vulnerable and like actually say to people what you're doing, like, what did that process look like for you? Was it easier? Was it like super uncomfortable? 
if I'm speaking to um, ha- trying to invite people to explore, mm-hmm. right, when they're working with their own horses, even if they're in a training program, like if you get an inspiration to move in a certain way, like just try it. Mm-hmm. Them always kind of looking at professionals as you must have this magical thing that no other human has. And that's why you can do that. I can't do that because I'm just, you know, I'm this person that works in tech and horses are my hobby. So I, that doesn't happen for me yeah. where when they hear that story of like, I'm sure that it must have at some point when you create something like this have come up for you where you kind of felt like maybe I'm, you know, maybe this isn't what I'm, or maybe this is wrong or are people going to yeah. judge this? Like, did any of that come up for you while you went through this process? Oh, or was it just like When I first started uh, to do seminars, I thought, you know, having been around horses when I was a kid and then I was away from them and then back again. Um, I was thinking, well, I'm getting a lot of people challenging me on this stuff, you know, cause they've been around horses 35 years and they know horses like are this certain way. And, and I thought, well, I'll just have to, you know deal with that when it comes up but it didn't come up very much hardly mm-hmm. at all. I think cause this was so different that, that it didn't um, they didn't have any, they couldn't um, they didn't know enough about it to challenge it. So and it was working for them too. So I didn't get a lot of people that like that, but um, it is at first when you go to work on somebody's horse and you're showing them the, bl- the bladder meridian, you know, like they're going to think, what, what are you nuts? You know, or I do a, a demonstration demo at a horse expo and I'm in the arena and there are all these people around and they got some guys sitting there, you know, like, you know, watching and I'm lo- looking at them thinking they're not buying this at all. And um, mm-hmm. after the demo, they come up and say, well, that was pretty cool. You know, how do you, how do you, how do I learn how to do this? So that was kind of neat. So I didn't run into a lot of that, but there was some trepidation about it too, mm-hmm. you know, about it. But once you get, you know, once you know what you're, you, you know what you know, and you're, and you just keep it in that, like teaching, you know, you know, yeah. somebody come to a seminar and start asking questions. Well, what do you think about this? And when I learned that this means that, and I'd say, well, that, you know, that's probably true and it's correct, but this is the way we look at it. And I steer it back to reading the horse's responses to release tension and key junctions of the body. The most spectrum. So that was, it was, you know, <laughs> steer it back there. And early on, I, you know, I had a practitioner and she, she went out there and went to work on horses and she was really good. And she, I remember she called me and she said she was, she, she was in a barn working on a horse and a couple of, uh, an equine massage therapist came in to work on another horse. And this therapist had a lot of knowledge of anatomy and, and was, pointing out to the owner of this other horse, how this muscle was larger here and that muscle was there. And this, you can see this muscle called the, you know, spaghettius ferrarius and a lot of big <laughs> Latin words that is, is more overdeveloped. And, and she, and, and, the, and my practitioner was a little intimidated by it. And I told her, um, you don't have to be an expert in all of that. You don't have to be an expert in anatomy and all that. You, you're an expert, you're, it's about results. You're an expert in reading and following the horse's responses to release tension and key junctions of the body the most effective performance. That's all you're an expert in. And mm-hmm. if you get results, they're going to call you back. And if that other person that has a lot of Latin words in her vocabulary doesn't get results, they're not going to call her back again. So I told her to relax about that. And she said, oh, well, I am an expert in that. So I'll just kind of stick to what I know. And, right. and so, yeah, that's perfect. But it's true with anybody, you know, with horses. A lot of people are feel like they need to know everything and they need to they need to be right about it because they don't want people to think they don't know what they're doing with horses. And if you can let go of that and stick with what you do know and what works, then then um, you're going to be better off. So. Yeah. For this is something that I always kind of think of and I kind of have a hard time. It's like I have a knowing about it, but me explaining it I get like a little bit like, well, so if somebody, you know, asks you about like energy, do you ever talk about that? Like it's stuck energy or is that something that you integrate into like your vocabulary when you're talking about this stuff? I, I, um, not much because I don't know a lot about energy, but I do know that, you know, there is energy work going on and people that do Reiki come to the the courses and say well this is kind of like reiki and they'll feel stuff you know in their hands right. and and i don't feel what they're feeling in my hands but i can see what's going on with the horse's uh, responses so that's a huge advantage to be able to read the horse's responses if you're not feeling trained in feeling mm-hmm. energy that's why anybody can do it but i don't doubt that what they're feeling they're feeling something and mm-hmm. and um and i don't doubt that there's energy that there is energy moving it, you know it's pretty clear i just don't talk about it in those terms 
probably for a couple of reasons. One's because one, because I don't see or feel the energy, right? You know, other than that, and two is because I don't want people to think it's something they can't learn. You know, right. that it's oh, it's energy work. You know, it's it's um, probably it, it is energy work on some level, but it's something that you don't have to to uh, learn how to feel or see or or work with energy. You just have to learn how to read the horse, and then pretty soon you start to your intuition starts to kick in. Pretty soon you just start to know when to stop, like you know when to put the hand on the horse that wasn't moved, that area that wasn't moving. Pretty soon mm-hmm. that starts to kick in and you just start doing something. You step back to see what the horse has to say and then something pops into your head. Oh, I'm gonna go here now. And so yeah. your, your, your um, intuition starts to kick in because your mind has settled down, Right. I think. So. Yeah. That's the long yeah. an- answer to your energy question. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Cause you do hear that and it does make it feel like a little bit less obtainable as far as like, I don't know enough about Reiki to speak to it, but I feel like it's the same thing. I didn't want to learn too much specifically about anything. Cause I felt like yeah. then I would be sucked into this, like, even with the masters and stuff, I know more about it now because of the trainings and stuff that are here and I get to watch and I, I understand it, but I was always worried if I dealt too far into any modality that I was going to like hinder what I was doing. So it's really good I think for people to hear like you don't have to be able to feel that stuff or sense that stuff like you can just pay close enough attention and be aware of what the horse is telling you by watching and observing yeah so I'm the same way I didn't want to learn anything else because this was working really really well you know right. and, and, it, and it got results and I didn't want to get drawn into any anything I, I thought it was more valuable if I could learn myself what worked rather than uh, what worked for somebody else so yeah, that's good. So if people, yeah, <laughs> if people want to um, learn about this, do they have to go through the whole certification program or can they just learn like well, the way the I, my kind of philosophy when I started, you know, sharing this was that I, you, you know, we have a lot of YouTube videos on our YouTube channel, channel teaching you how to do different techniques and aspects of techniques. We have, um, we have some free training videos on our website, uh, we have a 17 minute video on how to do the ladder meridian that came from one of our products light to the core. And I, the way I look at it is I want to put it out there and, and for people to try it. And if they like it, then they won't, they can learn more and they don't have to learn it all. But if you get the beyond, we have, well, I'll do the commercial, get it out of the way. We have um, <laughs> a beyond horse massage is the, is the kind of the primary book and DVD. There's a book and DVD that teaches you how to do, that teaches you how to do, pretty much all the techniques that we do on a weekend seminar. So um, you can you can get those, the book or the DVD or both, or, or you can go on and the, look at some YouTube videos and you try it and you see if you like it. And if you wanna learn more, then you do the next step. You go to a weekend, a weekend clinic seminar. And then if you wanna learn more, you go to the next step, which is a five day advanced course. And then if you wanna learn, go on towards certification, we have a field work uh, program and process that you go through and as you know, it involves um, working on horses at home, doing case studies, hooking up with a coach three, you know, at three at different periods. And you have a mentor, online mentor that you do your, give your case studies to. So it's a pretty long process. You know, that's like a year long and it's, it's, you know, it's pretty rigorous, but you don't have to go that route. You can just learn as you go along and just go to the uh, level that you want. So um, I just, my uh, main goal is that everybody uh, learn how to do the bladder meridian on their horse. Yeah. Simple. And it's free. It's on our website. Go do it. So, yeah. yeah. What is the website address? I forgot. Anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, mastersonmethod.com. Perfect. Yeah. And we'll leave all of that in the notes. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you feel like you want to say before we end to that kind of came up? And I always like to give people opportunity to like, oh, there's this thing I wanted to say. And to feel complete. No, um, yeah, I don't think so. I think it's, it was a good talk, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's cool. How, uh, you know, I do podcasts with people from time to time and this always inter, interweaves and correlates with what they're doing because it's kind of, you know, the horse is kind of universal. And I think, you know, people like us are kind of drawn um, to the same thing about the horse. And so um, usually when we, 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 whatever we're talking about, um, melds together really well so this melds really well together with what you do and the way you work with people and horses so yeah I think there's a lot of lessons in even 
people um, working with their horses, whether it's doing the bottom or, in, or just being around them, it's that whole piece of like, if you don't know the answer, just pause and listen, and they're going to let you know what the next step is. <laughs> yeah. And you know, even if it's not clear, just it's everything's an experiment. Even if it's not clear, I don't know what to do, ne do next. That comes up a lot. You know, that pops into your head. Like, what do I do next? Well, just first, just see what happens, what pops into your head. And if nothing pops into your head, just do something different, you know, mm -hmm. just do something. It, it, it's an experiment. Like when you're searching for certain points on the horse that we teach you to search, search for responses that will kind of, kind of help it along. Um, the, the question comes up, well, which one do I do next? And the answer is pick one, it's an experiment, <laughs> you know, see what happens. And if, if you get a, re if you get a response and a release, then that was the right thing. If you didn't, so what? Go do do another one. You you can't really do it wrong. You can only do it better. So, mm, yeah. And I think that's with horses in general. You we, we get worried that we're doing the wrong thing, and sl slow down and just do something, and then give the horse a chance to give you the feedback, and and you're not yeah. going to go wrong that way. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So so good. So we'll link all of that info in the show notes, and then if people want to dive deeper into it or learn more, then they yeah. will have their way to access you. Yeah. Well, you mentioned you did a, a, a talk with Warwick Schiller, and he just just texted me today. Um, oh, really? McCall, he just got back from Arizona, <laughs> and we're going to do a podcast. <laughs> oh, funny. See how that works. It's all <laughs> intertwined. <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, that was energy work. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that was right there yeah <laughs> oh how funny well perfect thank you so much for spending the time with us and um yeah i definitely look forward to learning more and diving deeper and um, yeah well you're you're you have sandy right in your area so yeah, that's cool and then, <laughs> and then we'll be back i don't remember know when our next certification course is out there but you know hopefully yeah. we'll be at your place yes yeah. i get the benefit of that yeah, <laughs> or, we do too. my horses do <laughs> yeah well, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right.